If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. What we'll do first is draw a picture that represents the given information. Now we're going to divide this problem into two parts. Let's first examine part one. In part one, the ball is dropped from rest as indicated in the question, and it falls until just before it hits the ground with some final velocity. Now because it was dropped from rest, we can say the initial velocity is zero meters per second. What we need to do is figure out this final velocity of the ball right before it hits the ground. Now in part two, what's going to happen is the ball, after hitting the ground, will rebound and move upward with some initial unknown velocity, and then it's going to rise and reach some height, at which point it momentarily stops, so its final velocity will equal zero meters per second. Let's go ahead and label the respective heights on the part one and part two pictures. In part one, the height will be 1.25 meters because that is the original height from which the ball was dropped. And then in part two, this height will be 0.96 meters because that is the height to which the ball rises. Let's go to part one. And our goal again is to find the final velocity of the ball, the moment before it hits the ground. And to do that, we can use the following equation from kinematics. So in this equation, we have the final velocity on the left side, and then we have the initial velocity, acceleration, and vertical displacement, which we've called delta y. The initial velocity in part one, as noted, is zero meters per second, so we'll plug zero in for vi. And then because the ball is in free fall, its acceleration will be the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then the vertical displacement will be 1.25 meters, but notice that because the ball is moving downward overall, we need to call that vertical displacement negative 1.25 meters. We can pick up our calculators and simplify the right-hand side. We should get 24.5, and then to solve for the final velocity, we would take the square root of both sides. And so the v squared will become v, and the square root of 24.5 is going to be either plus or minus 4.95 meters per second. Now, notice again that the ball is moving downward at this final position here, and because it's moving downward, the velocity must be negative. So we're going to reject the positive root and keep the negative root for that final velocity. So now we go over here to part two and we perform a similar calculation, except this time we're looking for the initial velocity. So here is the same equation for the final velocity. As noted earlier, it will be zero. The acceleration, once again, will be the acceleration due to gravity, so that's negative 9.8. Now, in this case, the vertical displacement will be a positive 0.96 meters, because initially the ball is down at ground level, and then it rises and moves in the upward or positive y direction, so its overall vertical displacement will be positive since it's moving in that upward direction. So we'll make sure that we put that in here. We can grab our calculators and multiply these three numbers together. We can then add this 18.816 over to the left-hand side. And then we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation, and then we can see that this initial velocity in part two is going to equal positive 4.34 meters per second. Notice. We're keeping the positive root in this case rather than the negative root because the initial velocity is pointing upward in the diagram and that would be the positive direction. We are now prepared to calculate the impulse that was given to the ball by the floor. Now we know that impulse, which is typically represented by the letter J, is equal to a change in momentum. Now a change in momentum can be rewritten as a mass times the change in velocity, which would be the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Now let's go back to the pictures, and what we're doing is we're focusing on the moment before the ball hits the ground, as well as the moment immediately after it hits the ground and rebounds up. In that case, we would call this moment the initial velocity right before it hits the ground, and then this moment over here the final velocity, which would be right after it hits the ground and rebounds upward. So with that in mind, we can go ahead and plug in the mass, which was given to us as 0.15 kilograms. We'll plug in what we are calling the final velocity for this ball-to-ground impact, 
And then we will subtract the initial velocity. Don't forget the initial velocity was negative, so we're actually subtracting a negative value, which of course will change that into addition of a positive value. Let's pick up our calculators and simplify this. And when we do that, we should get about 1.39. And then for the unit of impulse, since we multiplied a mass times a velocity change, we would have the unit of mass, which is kilograms, times the unit of velocity, which is meters per second. So this would be the correct magnitude of the impulse. And for the direction, because our impulse came out positive, that means the impulse is directed upward. And so we can attach that label for the direction.